Our scripture readings for this sixth Sunday of Easter come from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, and also from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the familiar words of chapter 13. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We begin with the familiar words of 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, and yet have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all knowledge and all mysteries, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, if I even deliver my body to be burned, and yet have not love, I gain nothing. For love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices at right. For love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it too will come to an end. For our knowledge is imperfect and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. When I was a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and I spoke like a child. But now that I've become an adult, I've given up childish ways. For now we see through a mirror dimly, but soon face to face. Now we know in part, but soon we shall understand fully, even as we are fully understood. And so faith, hope, love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. And from the Gospel of John chapter 10, the account of Jesus describing himself as the Good Shepherd. Let's again hear the reading of God's Word. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with his disciples, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it. Abundantly. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of my sermon this morning, Start Your Engines. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. For those of you who are auto racing enthusiasts, NASCAR returns to racing today with a NASCAR Cup Series race of 400 miles at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina with a start time of 3.30 p.m. 
I'm not sure who will speak them, but I can certainly imagine the emotion invoked when the most famous words in motorsports ring out. Drivers, start your engines. But start your engines for what? And why use these words as the title of my sermon as we worship this morning for those able to join us later today for the first time physically present together in over two months at a drive-in service in the parking lot around the Scout Hut lawn? Start your engines to reopen our economy. Start your engines to venture safely back out into the surrounding neighborhood, community, and world after stay-at-home confinement since almost March the 15th. And start your engines to begin the journey back to the world we had before, the coronavirus. I'll leave that up for each of you to decide as it applies to yourself. But my thought behind the idea this morning of start your engines is the same one I think Jesus has in mind as he speaks to his disciples at the beginning of chapter 10 in the Gospel of John. Even though the lockdown mentality since mid-March continues to overwhelm so many of us, as only now we are beginning to see a glimmer of hope on the not-too-distant horizon, especially here in North Carolina. I think we all struggle at one time or another with haunting fears this pandemic has magnified exponentially, which our economic success coming into this year simply camouflaged or allowed us to overlook or avoid or ignore. But the life we have on the outside for all to see is what life is all about. And the only life we can have. Scrambling for friends while searching for a work career we'll enjoy and feel called to do. Inspiring the recognition of others as well as giving us freedom and control over what ultimately happens to us. And helping us accumulate sufficient resources and assets, otherwise known as stuff, to keep us happy, satisfied, and content. The life we have on the outside is what life is all about, and the only life we can have. Only right here in John chapter 10, Jesus, the one whose life, death, resurrection, and ongoing presence is at the center of all faith. Jesus says the whole purpose of his life and mission is to help us find so much more. In the words of verse 10, I came that you may have life, real life, and have it abundant. You see, the abundant life Jesus promises is first for each of us and each of us individually and personally between us and God, so often with ourselves alone. It's not addressed to our family or to our friendship group per se, but to us personally and with our specific name on it. So eventually each of us as individuals can respond to it. It's not about a bigger house, or a second car, or a summer cottage, or a longer family vacation. Anything we can think of that makes life better for us and our loved ones, because none of these are going to bring us by themselves the abundant life Jesus speaks about. Those nearest and dearest to us may appreciate them, but they cannot grow us spiritually or inwardly to the depth God wants us all to discover. Therefore, the abundant life Jesus promises means we also have to look inward and not outward all the time to find it. Only our culture is not good at that. No culture is good at that, at helping people grow spiritually. That's not what cultures are for. 
Culture is about helping people hang together, giving them a collective identity. But who we are individually and spiritually is largely up to us more often alone. You see, most of us wind up making a living, but many of us can miss making a life. Discovering life is what making a living is all about. This brings us exactly to what Jesus means by promising us abundant life. Yes. It's for each of us individually and personally and alone in relationship to God. And yes, we have to seek it inwardly and spiritually and not just outwardly, but Jesus also promises abundant life by what he models for us in his own life. Looking at Jesus, those wiser and smarter than me observe how as a person, Jesus was pretty obscure. He didn't have much money. He apparently didn't own property. He taught and he healed. He got along with very little stuff. He prayed a lot and did a lot of good. He knew his Bible inside out, but he also rubbed some people the wrong way because he refused to go along with the way some things were done. And in doing all this, Jesus offered people a vision a vision of another way of being in this world. And some people took him up on his offer, and that changed everything. And the world is different and a better place because of the abundant life Jesus modeled and creates through us who follow his voice as our shepherd. For we are his sheep. In the words of Franciscan priest, Father Richard Rohr, there are only two major paths by which the human soul comes to God. The path of great love and the path of great suffering. And both finally come down to great suffering because if we love anything greatly, we will eventually suffer for it. When we're young, God hides this from us. We think it won't have to be true for us, but to love anything in depth and over the long term, we eventually must suffer the path of great love and the path of great suffering. The past few months, I've been trying to take in psychologically spiritually and personally, what God is trying to say to all of us right now. But when I use such language, I'm not saying God causes suffering to teach us good things, but God does use everything. And while these are surely challenging times, we remain in the midst of a highly teachable moment. And there's no doubt this period will be referred to for the rest of all our lives. Going deeper inside ourselves is being forced on us by great suffering, yet which according to the model and example of Jesus always leads to greater love. I remember when I was a young person watching television on a Friday night around 10 to parents. Those great shows such as Star Trek with Mr. Spock, Bones and Captain Kirk, and Bonanza with Little Joe and Hoss and Ben Cartwright, only to find myself deeply uncomfortable with my parents in the same room and the occasional deodorant commercial would come on during the advertising breaks. And that's nothing compared to what was advertised all day before this pandemic a few months ago. While the reruns of sporting events and old movies are about to drive me crazy, the shift, the shift in our public conversation and vocabulary, and by that I do not mean of all our politicians and network news commentators, but the shift in our public conversation to include words like heroes and compassion and caring 
along with looking out for one another and recognizing the, the sacrifices ordinarily people make for the sake of strangers every single day has been an unexpected gift that our culture desperately needed. So, drivers, Christians, people of Belmont and Gaston County and North Carolina and America and all around the world, start your engines! And embrace the abundant life even now. Jesus promises each of us personally and inwardly that he modeled for us about another way of being in this world. The way of suffering now, yes. But going deeper inside ourselves, forced on us by great suffering, always leads us to even greater love. For love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love in Jesus Christ never ends. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Christian, go start your engine for a more abundant life with God from this day forward.